Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gamba Red, and today we're back for round two of LED heat lamp therapy. You can learn a little bit more about the background in our previous video. Uh, we're going to do it the same thing again today in a, with a very similar lamp, except this time I have a different lamp that's 660 red light. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use red light, red LEDs, as a heat lamp therapy. So we're documenting the first recorded cases of LED heat lamp therapy, and this time we're going to see the effects of just pure 660 red light on the skin and what the temperature change will be. Okay, so we're going to check the intensity again with the uh, Thor Labs power meter. We'll put the sensor right underneath kind of the center point, see what we get kind of a max reading for. And we get up around 411. And if you remember, this is very similar, you know, power and intensity as the previous lamp that was 850. Um, so this time it's going to be interesting because we're going to be testing very similar setup, same distance, same everything. Um, it's a little bit lower power, but we're trying to see not only how much heat do we get from a high intensity red light, but is it more or less than the 850? Well, we'll try to think about that as we compare. Because there's a lot of rumors that obviously, you know, people say, oh, red light is less heating than infrared. Um, but near infrared actually is well documented in the science to have less heating on the skin because it penetrates deeper so the light gets more dispersed. So near infrared has less heat and not red. That's kind of a big misnomer that everyone's been missing. I've been documenting that and the science is very clear in a lot of our uh, latest blogs. So again, to get the intensity, we divide the milliwatts by the area of the sensor is 3.8. So we're at 107 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Um, so again, that's a little bit less. It's, I think the other one was about 115 with the 850. So we're gonna be a little bit less intensity, uh, but overall it's very similar, you know. It's hard to get everything exactly the same. Um, but that should be a good comparison, which one's more or less heating. So the contrast is really blown out. So when I turn on the bright red light, it blows out the contrast. You might not see my timer in this video. The ambient temperature is 20.3, so it's similar to yesterday. And we'll start by taking a measurement of my skin. I'm a little cooler this morning, a 35.8, but you know, that's a good, good starting point. Usually, you know, pretty close to 36. Um, so we can get started. Okay, so let's get started. Like I said, you probably can't see my phone and the timer now because of the contrast, but I'll call out the times. But again, it's, you know, starting off as a nice soothing warmth. It's nice and nice and warm, good, good for a fall morning. All right, it's been about a minute, but I already feel like I'm warming up pretty good. So yeah, I'm already up to 36.8 so that's a full degree in just a minute so you know again it's it's a pretty pretty rapid heating it's it's pretty similar to yesterday maybe a little bit faster there were some really good podcasts with dr scott zimmerman and he talks about it's, it seems to be like a pet peeve of his similar to me of like everyone's kind of assuming that certain wavelengths are heating they kind of just blindly memorize that oh infrared is always heating but that's not always the case if you have you know certain amount of joules if you have 10 joules of far infrared versus 10 joules of red versus 10 joules of blue they all technically have the same kind of capacity for heating and, and temperature it's just how things are absorbed and obviously we associate far infrared with water absorption that's superficial absorption so that's why we feel heat but you also get heat with the shorter wavelengths like blue uv green because of melanin absorption so anything that causes superficial absorption that's where the heating comes from two minutes and 30 seconds And yeah, this is fast. This is real fast. It's 39.8. Okay, we're getting to the four minute mark. Let's take another measurement. I'm feeling nice and toasty. And yeah, I'm over, over the limit here, about 41. Here it shows 40.4. So that's very rapid heating in just four minutes with a, with a red light. Again, kind of debunking. Uh, people saying red light doesn't have heat when you get more more heat it seems like it's more rapid than yesterday with the 850 uh, we're up to 41 
in just four minutes. So I think that's that's even faster than the other day. I think the other day it took almost seven minutes to get that high. Okay, let's check again around six minutes. Oh, now we're past the limit. 42. So I think 42 is the limit for this. So then just gives me a high error. So it says 42 on some points, but it could be, oh, here it says 42.5. So I don't know, maybe it's 43. So 42.5, you know, we've blasted past, you know, even, and remember this is a couple intensity points lower than the 850. So this is definitely hotter, you know, radiant heat. I've got enough space of an air gap that, you know, there's no heat from the device. I'm just getting radiant heat from the red light itself, absorbing into mostly my melanin and hemoglobin. You know, those are the two big chromophores. And again, partially water is part of the absorption, even though it's extremely low for this wavelength. All right, seven minutes. Still 42.4, 42.6. 42.6 so still up there maybe I've kind of plateaued at you know 42.6 you know it's it's a pretty I get a little bit of that stinging heat sensation um, but again it's not like you know putting your hand on a frying pan so you don't really have that instinct to pull away okay eight minutes and you know that'll be our last one that's where we ended last time so 42.6 in one spot 42.7, 42.8, so yeah, we're getting, getting close to 43, but not, not quite over. Seems like maybe I, I leveled out into a nice kind of thermoregulation for, you know, my, my body and skin type. Okay, well, we're going to finish this, but, you know, we definitely show that red light is heating, and it seems to be a much more rapid heating, even with slightly lower intensity, much more rapid heating than the 850. So again, if you want to reduce heating, you use 850, 830, 810, the deeper penetrating ones that have low melanin absorption, low hemoglobin absorption, and low water absorption. It's only when you get to the mid-infrared and far-infrared, um, typically past 1100 nanometers, that's where you get the real heating. So don't associate when you hear the word infrared when you've got near infrared and the right wavelengths in the low 800s those are non-thermal those are the lowest heating wavelengths you can find so red is more heating but in a, in a couple hours after i cool off i'll do it again with the higher height okay we're doing part two with the 660 nanometer light just like last time we increase the distance this exact same amount of distance um, so that way we get less intensity on the skin for this round we've got 209 milliwatts on the Thor Labs power meter where we're kind of taking a measurement from the center point here. So 209 divided by 3.8 gives us 55. So we get 55 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Again, that's like one point lower than what we had uh, in the last video with 850. So we're right in that same exact range. Everything else is the same. So we've got the same setup. So now, like I said, we're kind of measuring how much heat we get from, you know, 55 milliwatts per centimeter squared of a 660 red wavelength. And again, it'll give us another point of comparison, which one is more or less heating. Is it the red or the near infrared? Okay, and we'll measure my arm before we go in. And it's 36.1, so it's gone to back down to normal. It's been a couple hours later, so it looks good to go. All right, and here we go, starting the timer. And again, this does feel subjectively warmer than yesterday when I used the 850 at the increased height at around 55 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So it does feel like the red is having more heating, more warmth um, than, than the near infrared. So yeah, we're already bumped up a, you know, half a degree, you know, 0.4 of a degree. We're up to 36.5 in just one minute. So, you know, that's a little, you know, pretty quick for, for a bump up, just, you know, immediate uh, half of a degree. All right, let's check two minutes because it does feel like more rapid heating. Holy crap. Holy cow. So it's already up to 36.9, so almost a full almost a full degree so it's it's pretty 
pretty rapid for even for you know what people would consider a low intensity but it's actually a high intensity and people kind of need to rewrite their reference ranges that you know 50 should be the limit because then you're you're very obviously going to get uh, heating with a big panel it's fine if you have a laser because the laser point will go in and you know it'll diffuse through the skin and it's just a small point so it'll kind of disperse um, so lasers tend to be higher intensity but if you look at the total milliwatts they're still using you know a low milliwatt you know 50 milliwatt or 100 milliwatt or something you know usually under uh, 400 or 500 for low level laser therapy but because the spot size is so small that's when you know the lasers seem like they have high intensity but it's technically still low power all right it's three minutes 37.6 wow 37.6 even at this distance and this lower intensity that's that's pretty fast all right let's check four minutes already it's already beeping at me at 38.5 so again you know that's a significant increase in only four minutes that's two degrees Celsius. You know, once you get past, you know, two or three Celsius, you know, you're, you're clearly not in the range of photobiomodulation anymore. You're definitely in the range of a, a heat therapy, even at with a red wavelength and, you know, certain amount of intensity, you got to consider the heat therapy, the safety, you know, the thermal effects as well. And, you know, a lot of people are being sold a red light therapy device and then, then they're like, oh, why am I feeling heating? And if they ask the manufacturer, the manufacturer says, oh, congratulations, you're a victim of medical fraud. You got a heat lamp. It's the best of both worlds. You get heat and light therapy. But you bought a light therapy. You didn't buy a heat therapy. And then they tricked you and they sent you a heat therapy. So it's kind of weird to like, you know, convince people that like, oh, we sent you a different medical device that is actually more of a heat therapy. Um, when, you know, either they don't know what they're doing or, you know, it's all just marketing and, and nonsense to them. Okay, we're getting to six minutes. I am feeling a little bit of a sting kind of in the middle of my forearm. 39.5. So 39.4. So, you know, it's up there. And, you know, I'm feeling a little bit of that, that stinging. I'm not sure where exactly, but you know, it's not terrible, but it's, it's getting up there close to, to 39. Okay. Seven minutes. Yep. We're up to 40.3. So we passed the 40 mark there. So, you know, again, now it's, it's definitely a heating heat kind of therapy zone between like 40 to 43. It's kind of a gray area, gray area of like, Hey, you're in that, that heating zone. So you don't want to get much higher than 43 to 45. That's where, you know, problems start to happen. But again, if you have normal kind of sensation that you should be feeling the burning sensation starting around 43, and that's when you know to pull away. So you got to listen to that. Don't just, you know, listen to everyone else telling you that, oh, it's totally safe. Don't worry about it. Just burn your skin. It's fine. Um, you know, listen to what your skin's telling you. And again, you're going to feel heat different than me. And then you're going to have different thermal regulation and blood flow and water content and, you know, skin types and everything. So you got to just listen to your body or get get one of these that they recommend for heat therapy is to monitor the skin temperature. But even at eight minutes, we're still at hovering around 40. So hopefully it's leveled off. Hopefully, you know, it's not going to keep climbing and climbing. If my, you know, skin and circulation has ramped up, you know, it's going to decrease penetration, but at least my thermal regulations kicked in and it finds kind of a steady state that you know, if you're trying to do a heat therapy, you can hold at that steady th state for, you know, 10 or 20 minutes, and then you'll get a therapeutic dose of heating. Obviously, you're going to massively overdose the red light therapy, um, but now you're doing heat therapy mechanisms. So it's kind of different how you dose each one. Okay, nine minutes. It's 40.7, so it's still slowly climbing in temperature. All right, we're getting close to 10 minutes. And yeah, we're up to 41. So it's still kind of climbing. So that's where, you know, if you do longer doses, it's going to keep climbing and, you know, you don't know where it's going to level off. And, you know, I don't want to be here all day. I'm not sure if red and near infrared light have that kind of same 
plateau like I've seen in other studies where, you know, they set the heat pad or the device to a certain temperature. So you get that therapy. This is a little bit less controlled of a heat therapy. So it's kind of tough to use these as a heat therapy. That's why they're better as red light therapy. All right, 11 minutes. Yeah, just around 41, 41.3. So it does seem, you know, seems to be hotter than the 850, but we we went a little bit longer for this because I wanted to see if it would flatten out, but it hasn't really flattened out. So, but anyway, you know, it's not as terrible, but again, you know, you want to be under probably 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared, ideally closer to sunlight intensity, which is like 35. Um, that's a nice, a nice safe zone. Or again, you can do even lower. If you've got big devices covering a lot of skin, you get a lot of jewels with low intensity and you know, that's usually the way to go. Uh, but anyway, hopefully uh, you learned something. You learned about the difference between heat therapy and light therapy and how to properly dose heat therapy and monitor your skin. If you got an overly intense product, you got to start monitoring the skin. Don't even worry about intensity anymore. Don't worry about wavelengths. You're just creating heat. So <laughs> the photons get converted to heat. They're, you know, they're not really going towards the photochemical effects. They're getting photothermal effects. All right, so thanks for tuning in.